Hi, I'm Hannah Durden and you're listening to the Outdoors Group podcast. This podcast is a call to arms to get children and young people outside again. It's your one-stop shop for all things outdoor, child, young person and education related. Thanks for tuning in. I'm joined this morning by Ian from Our Spectrum Adventures. Ian and his daughter Eve are coming towards the end of an absolutely phenomenal adventure that they've been undertaking since March this year. And I was really thrilled when I contacted Ian and Sarah and they agreed to spare me an hour to chat this morning. So, yeah, thank you for joining me, Ian. Awesome. Hello. (laughs) Um, So I think we start at the the beginning. Can you tell us like exactly what it is that you guys are doing and what you've been doing all year and why, why you've been doing it? Well, on March the 1st of this year, me and Eve set off from Dunnet Head, which is the most northerly point of mainland Britain. We yeah. walked from there around to um, John O'Groats, and from John O'Groats we headed south towards Land's End, and from Land's End we're going round the coast a bit further to Lizard Point, which is the most southerly point of mainland Britain, so we're doing the entire UK top to bottom end to end. Most people do Lands End to John O'Groats, or John O'Groats to Lands End. Um, thinking that's that's like the entire UK, but it's not there. Like the two furthest geographical points. Yeah. Don't know if there's a point of the two furthest north to south that so we're combining it all into one route. We're doing it. It's about thirteen hundred miles all in all, and that's we're doing it to raise money for the National Autistic Society and just to try and raise a, raise a bit of awareness and challenge a few sort of stereotypes that autism is a limiting, um, I want to say condition, but it's not condition, it's just is, yeah. um, but, but it can limit you when in actual fact it doesn't. It can in certain aspects of people's lives and it does prove quite challenging, but in other aspects it doesn't and it can provide a good stepping stone and certainly a good springboard to achieve stuff that most other people simply can't I mean most of the great people of the world either have or uh, are very closely associated with autism I mean Elon Musk people most people have heard of him he's on the spectrum Einstein was believed to potentially been on the spectrum etc etc I mean this just goes on and on so, so yeah Awesome. And where are you right now? So obviously you've been going since March. So you're. I've got to confess, I'm not actually. <laughs> and sure, Sarah's sat next to me. I've got even Hi. friends Hi, of Sarah. me. <laughs> so she, I think she's just brief, yeah, quickly you, trying to have a look. Because half the places we go through and end up, to be perfectly frank with you, I can't pronounce half. Tiny them. little places, yeah. But I mean, you're <laughs> yeah. down, you're down, you're West Country now, aren't you? Yeah, we've done probably yeah. give or take a thousand miles. You're at a place called Vic Nola. Bick Noller. Oh, well, I'm I've sure not heard of that either. <laughs> no, so no, that I'm sure near Minehead. It's near Minehead. Near I'm Minehead. Sure I've oh, that's totally wrong. So, so you're I'm near the start, start of the South West Coast Path. Path. Yeah, we're not that far. We're we're following it more sort of through the middle, and then we're going to yeah. pick up the South West Coast Path from Barnstable. So okay. once we sort of, so it's almost like we're on the penultimate section before Correct. the start yeah. of the end. Okay. If you know what I mean? So yeah, so. So, that's exciting yeah. i mean the southwest coast path is like right well, I'm, I'm south devon so it's kind of my stomping ground but I'm, yeah. i just love it it's beautiful i'm trying to do more of the north devon coast so i'm looking forward to seeing all your pictures of it as uh, you guys get to that point yeah the, the, there's a lot down there we've not done really much time or hiking or on that down there so it's quite exciting for us because it's all yeah. kind of new because we're sort of more used to northern england midlands from when we were younger and obviously scotland where we where we now live so yeah, but, yeah. And so Eve is eight, isn't she? She's eight. She's eight now. When we started doing the walk, she was she was only just turned eight by about two weeks. Okay. I I can't believe that she's done. Yeah. What do you say? Almost a thousand miles at eight years old, and and that she's keeping going. What is it that she loves about it? What's kind of keeping her going? Um. Well, when I read your que- read your questions, my first gut instinct was polo mints at the moment. <laughs> but obviously, there's. I think it's just. For all of us, even particular, being outdoors is just what works. It's just, yeah. just the, it, it just works. Everything about it. You can be free. You can be wild. You can just get on with life. And there's no sort of preconditions. There's no expectations. There's no social norms like that. You can just sort of live. And I think that with Eve, as all children, if you really have any 
issues with Eve, it's indoors. When we yeah. get her outdoors, she's a fundamentally different child at her very core. Yeah. And and she just becomes a totally different person. And it's brilliant. It's awesome to see her so happy, outgoing, just gain this totally different perspective on everything. It's fundamentally yeah different and I think unless you kind of know her and you've seen the differences you, it kind of sounds a little bit romanticized or something like that but unless you see it you, yeah. you can sort of grasp the, the the sort of differences in in her and, and it's good it's great it's what it's obviously what we want as yeah parents yeah, no, it really makes sense to me because yeah we as, as I think I said to you the other, uh, in our, our emails we work with um yeah lots of uh, autistic kids and like the amount of times that parents and teachers and stuff come and say that you know they're a completely different child when they're outside with you compared to how they are in the school like it's just yeah. it's transformative isn't it being outside that's it I mean but there is the other other side of it we've met people that um they're on spectrum and it's the complete opposite they struggle mm. the parents struggle to get them outside and get them into the forest and get them dirty and all that sort of stuff so yeah. it is it, it, do you know what I mean it's like it's a spectrum so yeah so it's not going to work met, everyone if you've met someone on the spectrum you've met one person, one person. On the spectrum, yeah and that's it but Everyone it works for Eve and you obviously enjoy three, it yeah it works for Eve well it works for all of us we've both got a, a life for the outdoors Sarah used to work in the outdoors she's got stacks of qualifications in it from guiding rafts and Oh yeah, I can't, I can't even begin to list them. Wrong. She's got so many. So yeah, and then so yeah, so so it's kind of what we what we do and where we like to be. So, yeah. Awesome. And uh, the snacks are obviously helpful as well. <laughs> the oh yeah, yeah. Well, well, at the end she's eight years old, isn't she? I yeah, mean, a absolutely. Of refined sugar does have quite a quite a potent effect. So yeah. yeah well, when we good. go to the lakes, um, the one motivator for any of the walking we do is the Kendall mint cake. Are we going to have mint cake today? Oh, we'll go on then. Is it a long enough walk to demand Kendall mint cake? And the kids are like, it's always Kendall mint cake on a walk. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we we carry candle mint cake, but we tend to use that as a as a as a bit of a boost when when things are getting a little bit difficult and challenging, and now yeah. we kind of use that as a as a sort of yeah as a um booster. Yeah. So, pretty much uh, that's the word I was trying to remember, uh, but I can't remember what it is now. But, but the, the, that we use, but yeah, it's kind of a uh, yeah when things are hard, we we really need to. We need that extra <laughs> boost to get to the end. Yeah. Yeah, pull out the Kendall mint cake and yeah. <laughs> What's your favourite, the brown one or the blue one? I prefer the brown sugar. He prefers the white sugar. White sugar. So we take it in turns. So at the moment we did have a brown sugar. We've used most of that up, so now we're carrying a white sugar. Brown and that's the devil go the brown. So we, <laughs> so we can flip it. <laughs> I like that. Very fair. <laughs> <laughs> we did we did try. <laughs> so um obviously you're saying you've been trying to raise um awareness about autism and as you said it would not being kind of a limiting thing how's it kind of gone uh over the last couple of months have you had any kind of conversations or particular encounters that have stood out um where you've been talking to people about this or well we get a lot of messages on social media I mean a lot a lot yeah I mean, seriously a lot more than I doing the walk and most time could to be honest ever hope to keep up with so Sarah tends to deal with a lot of that um, so we get a lot of messages of support, of encouragement, of you've inspired us, we're doing this now, we're doing that, which is awesome and, and it's kind of the point. For From a bit of a personal perspective, I suppose one of the ones that stands out more recently is when we got invited up to Worcester with uh, with some army veterans and we got invited into like the town hall and we met the mayor and had tea and cake and got shown around, etc, etc. Because that was, that was, I mean, that just doesn't tend to happen not yeah. to joe blog to get invited in and the mayor's there to greet yeah, her and all amazing. that so yeah that, that was that was pretty epic to be honest i quite yeah we, we quite enjoyed that and i certainly hope that stays with eve so yeah so yeah but i suppose it's all it's just all the little things like like the inspiration if you can give to someone just to get out and try something or think about something slightly differently etc so yeah i thought it was a big stuff but it's often the little stuff i think that has the biggest yeah. long-term impact so yeah so yeah 
Yeah, I mean, I've seen your page shared all over the place because I, yeah, I saw it in the home ed community first of all, and then I saw other people sharing it, and I was like, oh, it's kind of, it felt a bit like you're going viral. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, good. It's, uh, it would be good if it, if it happened. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Have you how how have you found like the home ed community? So you're in Scotland. So, um, what's the home ed community like up there, and the kind of support they gave you to go off? Yeah, it's good. It's good. There's the is Sarah. Uh, speak to quite a lot of them more than I do and we've mm. had a lot of encouragement and support and we've taken her to the odd meet here and there etc etc and, it, and it's good it, it's nice and and the whole thing with home education as well is it is it does free you up to do stuff that the state education system simply can't yeah. I mean no disrespect to them but they they, they, they don't have the, the facilities of finances etc to do this sort of stuff so so yeah it's been pretty awesome to be honest and we do as I say on because we're on social media and we put it yeah. on there but we get a lot of comments and messages coming from other home educators saying if you need help with this you need support with that even yeah. if you need a sleeping or a dinner or you're getting an issue give us a call etc so I mean we've had some genuinely lovely people contact us that's got nothing to do with the whole autism thing and it is more to do with the home education thing yeah. because because we're able to do this sort of stuff yeah so yeah so no it's been pretty epic to be honest the amount of diversity there is in the people that seem to support supporters follow us yeah and, and yeah hopefully we can give back as much and as good as we get so yeah yeah yeah, so you're kind of um, you're also raising awareness of home ed as well, I guess, to people that are kind of wanting to know a bit about it. We are. I mean, it's, to be perfectly blunt and frank, it, it that was kind of never the thought. No, it no. was never the. You know, it wasn't the thought we're going to do this whole thing to do with home education. I mean, no. I mean, in all honesty, I think the whole COVID situation has has put home education a bit more into the spotlight. Anyway. Yeah. So, um. But it, it it's it's another string to the bow, and it's one that we're very proud to champion and hopefully yeah. promote. And it does help. It does help, but it with us because Sarah is a qualified teacher. So I think yeah. that's probably something that that I think is appropriate to say. Sarah has been to university. She's got all her qualified teacher status, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, which yeah. just helps. But it's by no means a limiting factor. You do not need to have a teacher in the family in order to home educate I mean there's so you, that you don't need but it's helpful for us as, 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 yeah. as a family yeah certainly don't have any formal academic no, well, I was gonna say well I home educate my three and neither of us are teachers and people always say oh do you not need to be a teacher I was like no no it's just about facilitation isn't it and giving them those opportunities like you've been able to give Eve this summer well, that, well that's it especially at the younger age I think and I do genuinely think it's more about character building and um, giving them the the appropriate life skills life knowledge their viewpoint into the world etc because at the end of the day education especially academic yes once you get more complicated stuff if you're dealing with Pyag 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 Pyagora theorem Py Py and all oh, i can't say that yeah pythagoras okay, sorry yeah i got tongue tied then or, or some of the more intricate details of, of physics and chem yeah, yeah yeah i think you need to maybe do a bit of research and a bit of home learning yeah. yourself etc but it's about character building because if you do that and you do it right and you do it well and a lot of that sort of stuff will start to sort of come and fall into place the child will start to learn what they love and what they want to yeah. do and they follow it i mean the amount of, of people that that do achieve great and you talk to them and a lot of it's self-facilitated the, the school maybe provided a direction and, and that but a lot of it's self-taught because the end yeah. of the day the education system regards whether you facilitate it or the state facilitates it will only get you so far ultimately no one's going to force you to sit in a classroom no. and read learn that has to come from you no yeah. teacher in the world is going to make a child learn that's got to come from you yeah if you can give the child um, a set of skills, an outlook on life, and that make that allows that to be a self or internalise, then to be honest, surely that's the best because then they can do anything. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, the I amount know. of people you meet who say, oh, you know, who are really successful and say, oh, I came out of school with no GCSEs, but I really yeah. love this, so I made it made it work for myself. Then. And I believe, uh, like Alan Sugar, I don't believe he's ever been to university. I could be wrong. But yeah, no, I've got a feeling you're right, though. He, and, and no one can say he's unsuccessful, can they? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so that's very cool. Yeah, you've definitely inspired lots of us down here. There's a friend of mine who, she's got three who she home eds and they've just started getting into hiking. And she was the person that shared it first of all, because she was like, oh my goodness, like, I think her boys are really inspired by it. She's starting to do Good. little, like, overnight, two-night trips with, like, them one at a time. But, um, yeah, building up, I think, to a big one with all three of them. <laughs> uh, well, but that's it. I mean, we're doing something quite big. But at the end of the day, it doesn't have to be. It could yeah. just be walk around your local park. It could be going to a different park. Or it could be going, it could be anything. And if you go camping and you go car camping and you've got three tons of kit, because that's what makes you feel comfortable and happy, then so be it. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be this big grand thing that we're trying to do with a wee bit more. It, 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 it can be small and little and stay within your, your comfort zone. Yeah. You don't want to make yourself and stress because you'll pass on to the kids anyway yeah so just exactly. keep it real so yeah. yeah yeah keep what you need yeah exactly um we mentioned earlier a bit about uh well, why you guys like being outdoors um so much is there anything in particular that she kind of has identified to you guys about what she likes about being outside like does she talk about it much or is it just that you guys have seen how much happier she is outside i think she she is happier things in particular i think it's it's just that feeling of being outside, being free, having that sort of feeling, being away from people. And because, I mean, none of us really like the towns and cities and people, yeah. that sort of stuff. So when we're out in the hills or in the forests and that, it doesn't matter. We, I mean, we walk down the trail and we're singing and we're shouting and we're yeah. playing, messing around and we're yanking on each other and put yeah you know i mean you can just but you can't do that when you're walking in this town so i think it's that sense of freedom and liberation yeah. that you can get and it's just you can see stuff and like like we were looking at an old wall with trees growing out the top of it and it's just it's just that whole being outside now uh, we heard a uh, there was a a psychologist that told us once that maybe walking is quite popular with on the spectrum because it's like a pattern it's like the monotony of step okay. on step up step. Yeah. yeah i don't know it could be something a bit more deep like that but i think it's probably just being outside being free and yeah. just nature i mean because if we see birds and it's just the whole the whole thing trying to pinpoint it to some specific thing i think would probably be a bit naive i think it's just the whole package yeah no yeah so yeah when then um, when you're kind of not doing your mega challenges what does like your kind of daily uh like your kind of life at home look like in terms of outdoors are you guys outside a lot at home as well yeah, we do we, we try and get outside as much as you can i mean moving to scotland it was one of the reasons we moved to scotland albeit we've lived in scotland for years even before he was born but yeah, we go outside as much as we can. Um, it's a bit harder. It can be in summer in Scotland because of tourists and the legendary Scottish midge can make it a little bit <laughs> challenging. I was um, talking about the midges. Is it like just like one month or is it most of the summer? About six months of the year. Summer. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> and they and and I mean, I, I've had loads of people turn around and say, oh, they have midges in the Lake District and all the rest. And we bought, we piped, we've camped in the Lake District. Yeah. Yeah, you have midges. Try going up onto Rannock Moor in Scotland <laughs> in the um, and then tell me the Lake District have got midges. <laughs> <laughs> it's phenomenal. I mean, you've not experienced anything like it until you've been up there. You, okay. it's no way to really repel them very easily. You, the, there are techniques and strategies to help minimise the effect, but you'll never be a billion midges when they want to drink your blood dry. Um, <laughs> I mean, you can use head nets and smidge and cover up and yada yada yada. They're they're small and they're and they're and they're relentless and, and insatiable and they will get through anything and everything. <laughs> it's, so yeah, so yeah, I think you have to be quite strong willed to go out. I mean, you look on the internet. There's these one minute challenges of people putting their hands out and seeing whether they can just survive just the hand for one wow. minute. Six. And it, it's a whole challenge in itself. So. 
you try I did to not know that because I was thinking about the challenge for getting outside it might be like the kind of harsher winters but um yeah I hadn't thought about midges in the summer we we prefer the colder months yeah we much prefer the colder months so because there aren't the midges there aren't so many tourists about and and I think because you because you can get obviously the darker nights the clear skies the stars are phenomenal the more north you go because yeah. it's just so darker and you've got no idea how bright the night sky can be just with the stars because there's so much light pollution in this country but the more north you go the more beautiful it gets you're lucky you'll you'll see some of the northern lights come through Amazing. um uh, the wildlife the low-lying clouds that hug the the hilltops and the sides of the mountains it's epic if, if i was to rise advise anyone to go to Scotland it would never be in the summer it would always be in the colder months because it's really so much that's so really interesting and um, if we go back to your trail what, what yeah. have, have you had some like favorite sections of the walk I mean I, you've probably got quite a few favorite ones but any in particular that surprised you that you liked we think uh, North Yorkshire was were, was stunning I mean yeah. it, it really was I wasn't expecting it to be quite as picturesque as it was um i think the the elements of the the pennine way were beautiful and quite remote and barren that was quite nice i think i'm quite i think i'm naturally a wee bit biased i think scotland was probably our favorite bit yeah. so aspects of west highland way was quite stunning and great glen way so they, they were quite nice so yeah the moment i think we had to repeat any of it i'd probably do some of the Scottish sections. Yeah. North Yorkshire, as I say, was particularly beautiful. But but then saying that we've still got a good few hundred miles yet to go yeah. through the West Country. And and one thing we were looking forward to on this route more than anything was getting onto the southwest coast of Yeah. So yeah. to be honest, I'm kind of hoping and confident in a lot of ways the best is yet to come in. He's certainly yeah. the bit to yeah. get on the southwest coast of Ireland. she's genuinely excited oh awesome uh, so yeah so we keep telling you how many days it is till we reach barnstable because then we're on the coastal path and we're just going to sort of follow that so yeah breathe i think that's probably yeah her thing that she's looking forward to the most so i'm hoping the best is yet to come and i think people probably will want to know about your logistics of um Obviously, Sarah's there today, but not walking with you. So how was it working with where you're sleeping every night and making sure that you guys see each other enough and things? We've done a bit of everything. We've done backpacking, um, wild camping. We've stayed in youth hostels. We've stayed in Airbnbs. We've been given uh, free accommodation by people as well that are following us. My parents have helped out because they've got a caravan as well. Obviously, we've got the camper van. We've only had the camper van two weeks something like that only about two okay. weeks that for long yeah so we've done a bit of everything yeah. to be honest but said that we haven't done quite as much of the wild camping um as we'd have liked simply because of regulations laws and all that sort of stuff it's made it a bit more challenging there hasn't been quite as yeah. many locations that are probably appropriate to do that with which is a uh, yeah which is a bit annoying I suppose but maybe that that's some of my naivety to be honest so well there's but, a yeah. whole discussion there isn't there about like the land rights movement and uh, access to land and things um it does feel quite sad that there's so many restrictions on where we're allowed to wild camp and things it does it does because it just I don't know I mean obviously in Scotland you've got the right to roam and you can legally wild camp anywhere you want but it's not obviously enclosed land military yeah. land in Scotland, it's a done thing, so it's kind yeah. of easier in Scotland. But in England, we've met quite a few quite angry farmers and various other people that don't like us being there. And trail, I mean, we spent the last few few days walking through parts of Somerset where the trails simply don't exist anymore. The farmers yeah. totally blocked them with electric fences, and it's been it's been a bit of a nightmare to be honest. Yeah. And thought of trying to wild camp anywhere around there, I think would be would be a little bit yeah. to be so so yeah so it is unfortunate but we'll we'll make up for that when we get back to Scotland yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, well, so, yeah, I've seen those bits about, uh, I've seen some of your posts about bits of the trail that haven't been maintained or have been closed off. And I think I was surprised because in my head, like, the walk is like fairly well known. So I kind of assumed, yeah, probably naively that they'd have maintained the whole thing. But obviously that's not been the case in some cases. Well, the thing with the whole John and Groats Land's End thing is there isn't a defined route. That's oh, part okay. of it, is you find your own route. Own route, Okay. And you do your own thing as long as you get from point A to point B, and you have a continual row, continual sort of row of footsteps. Yeah. Um, do your own thing. So I mean, we're doing as average is about thirteen hundred miles. You can do it a lot shorter, and you can certainly do it a lot, lot longer. Yeah. That's that's what we're doing. So part of the whole navigation and planning and all that sort of stuff is all part of. The, the whole challenge obviously we we've used a lot of like known footpaths like the west highland way and yada 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 um but part of the challenge is you find your own way it's not like some of the other oh, see, i didn't know that that's so cool yeah. yeah so so i mean we spent six months ish planning researching just the route and mm. checking up dps's and all that sort of stuff and but yeah and obviously using our west maps that in theory have all the trails and public footpaths mm. and right on them but obviously the farmers have chosen different <laughs> different from the maps yeah oh dear but, yeah. oh i'm sorry to hear you've had a few uh, altercations with angry uh, angry farmers oh well it's just to be expected i suppose <laughs> so uh, while we're still talking about like yeah where you stayed overnight and stuff I figured this is a good time to because I think we're going to release this episode next week which will be still in September yeah. so you'll still be walking so it's a good shout out opportunity to anyone listening that if they've got somewhere you can uh, stay in the southwest coast path to uh, get in touch. <laughs> yeah thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I reckon there'll be someone listening that will get in touch and go oh I've got somewhere. So uh... yeah, We've had a lot of offers to be honest there's a lot of very nice people out there and it, it's when things doing doing this well certainly from i suppose my selfish perspective is probably to be a bit less um critical of people's motives and stuff like that because we've had a lot of kind people yeah contact us a lot of them to be honest so yeah just be a bit more open-minded i suppose yeah. <laughs> so yeah well that's a good a, a good lesson to take away from it i guess <laughs> Um, and you're raising money for the National Autistic Society. Raising money for them with a target of 10,000. I'm not 100% sure where we're at. We're at nearly 6,000 apparently. Oh, nice. So, okay. So, yeah, so we're quite happy with that. I don't tend to look at it too, too much. No. Yeah, I don't. I was, yeah, I can get quite fixated on stuff, so I don't want to get, yeah, yeah, just. In the end of the day, it's as well, we, we started this, what was it? Was it the day after Russia invaded the Ukraine? And obviously the energy prices went mm. high and yada yada. Yeah. So I think feeling a bit of a pinch at the moment. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think raising six thousand pound is still a pretty yeah, that's I think that's yeah. phenomenal, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so, so, so if people still... out there want to sponsor you, they just need to go and find your website, which is our Spectrum Adventures. Is that right? Yeah, that's the website. And we've got um just giving, that's where we do all the donations okay. and everything. So that way it's kind of separate from us we don't have to sort of manage yeah. that yeah. just go straight to the charity so, cool. so and have you had much contact with the charity we've had bits yeah we, they, we do get sort of messages of, of how you're doing and good luck yeah. and they is up to some event that they were running in edinburgh and some members of the royal family apparently were going to be there but obviously that got cancelled yeah um i think that last night actually but anyway obviously that got cancelled obviously because oh, of the queen for the queen yeah um so yeah so that's probably gonna get rescheduled and so we'll go up there and yeah so we're good yeah yeah we're it's certainly nice. here and it's nice so yeah it's good yeah. awesome well i don't want to take up too much of your time and um, just before i ask you my last three little personal questions was there anything else you wanted to kind of tell people listening about your adventure or do you think you kind of covered most of it I mean, the the only th uh, thing I suppose, if people are listening and thinking about it, is just to do it. Life's pretty short. I was doing this more. This was really Sarah's pushing. I don't think, to be honest, I I in fact I can tell you I wouldn't have done this off my own back if this yeah. was Sarah saying. <clears throat> um, 
I'm trying not to swear now, but just get on with it. Swear, that's right. And, and, but, but, well, basically, Sarah turned around and said, "Fuck it, just just get on with it." Just do it, yeah. Yeah, just do it. So that's what we did. So don't be afraid. Just sort of try and do what you can and get out there and just give it a go. What's the worst that's going to happen? And the whole home education thing is, I think. You do have to take it seriously, but just chill with it. I mean, the yeah. end of the day, for a child, see where they take it, help support them in every way that you can, because there is a big community out there. They will help you. They will support you. And go for it. And because I don't think you'll look back and I certainly don't think you'll regret it. Yeah. It's, but it's in our opinion, it's one of the best decisions in our adult life yeah. we have made only one of the best decisions we feel at the moment we've made for our daughter and for Eve is to home educate her because the amount of stuff that she's learning she can do is, is amazing so don't be afraid there is a lot of help and support out there for you we'll help and support you contact us we'll, we'll do what we can and just do it and you won't look back you won't regret it it's the best move you could possibly make yeah yeah, I absolutely agree. Yeah, absolutely. I've never, I, I think there's been times when it's been exhausting and tiring and I thought, oh, and then when I think about the alternative, I think, no, no, we're doing what's best for our family. At the end of the day, anything in life that's worth doing and that is important, etc., and requires a bit of effort. You're yeah, You're not going to get anywhere without a bit of effort. Yeah. Without growth. So, do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, and the kids yeah do and because the end of that it's only going to last a few years and then oh, it goes so, so fast yeah so don't be afraid just do it because it's the best decision you, you can make and you'll be amazed what you can do and you, you'll amaze yourself the amount of stuff that you'll learn as well as you go yeah. along good advice Ian <laughs> for life there, in general <laughs> there we go <laughs> Um, so I'll just ask you really quickly my last three questions that I've been asking everyone because it's a nice way to finish. And the first one is, how do you relax? Um, I, I, to be honest, this is one of the hardest ones out of <laughs> all the questions that you sent us because I, I genuinely don't know. I just think we just get on with stuff. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really know, to be <laughs> honest. I can't really answer that because I think we do relax, but I don't think we... I think we just keep going yeah yeah yeah. active rest is yours then yeah yeah basically i think some people like to chill out and do i don't know go to the swimming pool or or, i don't know watch a film i don't know we're just kind of not those sorts of people (laughs) that's probably a good thing if you don't feel like you need to like allocate time to relax that's probably a pretty good sign of your guys uh quality of life hopefully hopefully i mean obviously there's times for everyone everyone that they just need a bit of time out but that's perfectly yeah. normal and so yeah. I'll go and I'll go and do my thing and yada yada yeah. yada but yeah I, yeah I, I, I don't actually know I don't think we have any definitive oh that's fine that's a valid answer as well <laughs> um and you probably don't have much time to read while you're on the road but if you're listening to any music or podcasts or anything that you'd like to share we are Eve is listening mainly to, to Harry Potter, the yeah. audiobooks read by Stephen Fry and David Walliams. We're about to start listening to The Hobbit on an oh. audio on a audio book while we're walking. So what we live, I'm reading a book by Stephen Hawkins at the moment and listening to podcasts by oh uh, what's the name. Her name's gone now. It's a lady on Radio 4, something Fry. She's a mathematician. Um, um, I think it's Hannah Fry. Um, listening to that. And Sarah tends to do a lot of reading, more sort of deeper reading. So she reads, um, I can't remember the sort of books she's reading at the moment. Oh, um, um, say again? Jane Austen. Jane Austen, Jane Austen and all, a bit more sort of deeper, deeper stuff. So, yeah. So, quite a good array <laughs> and lastly, yeah, quite lastly why is being outdoors important to you um because it's a way of life it's what we do yeah it, it, nice just, and just, simple nice and simple it's just where we're happiest where we feel most at home um we're not house proud we we just like to get out yeah as much as we can and 
yeah, just live an outdoor, active, adventurous lifestyle as much as we can. And well, now we put it all on the internet as well, so <laughs> everyone can see it. So. Well, that's lush. I think that's one of the good things about the internet is it's so nice to be able to share in other people's adventures, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. So yeah, there we go. Yeah. Brilliant. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time today. I know that um, you guys are really busy, so I really do appreciate you taking the time to come and chat to me. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you for talking to us. It's been been appreciated. Thank you for inviting us on. So thank oh, you. Oh, no, you're welcome. And um, good luck with the rest of the walk. I look forward to seeing particularly how you find the South West Coast Path. Yeah, yeah, we are quite excited about that, even particularly with all the beaches and that. So I might be so serious to be honest. So, yeah. <laughs> Make sure you have plenty of ice creams. Oh, he doesn't go short of ice cream because we've got a buy me a coffee fund and people donate sort of money to us and nearly everyone that a donation we get is free to buy an ice cream so thank <laughs> you to everyone that's done that eve is definitely not short of ice cream brilliant so. for everyone out there go and find them on just giving and what's that one buy me a coffee is it dot right. com I don't actually know, to be honest. But if Lincoln. they go to our Spectrum Adventures, they'll see it all, won't they? Yeah, I mean, put yeah. it on the Facebook as well, so it's all about the So thank you. Awesome. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, you take care. Thank you for talking yeah, to us. you too. Thanks so much, Ian. That was so much fun. Cheers. Bye. Bye. So thank you again to Ian, Sarah and Eve for sparing me some time last week to tell me all about their adventure. All the best, guys, as you kind of do your last few uh, weeks along the southwest coast path as you uh, kind of approach your destination. Uh, I hope it goes really well and the weather's kind for you as you're starting to walk into autumn. Uh, Everyone who's been listening, please go and uh, give them some support on their social media and website pages. You can find them easily at Our Spectrum Adventures and come back in two weeks' time for our next episode. Thanks for listening.